Today we're installing a full spool with 35 spline axles and C-clip eliminators from Strange Engineer. Full drag pack, baby, let's get into it. After you get the stock axles out, you're going to remove this flange next. Because we will have to cut a portion of the axle tube off to make the C-clip eliminators fit. I just want you guys to be able to clearly see. See this flange right here? There's a lip right there. We're going to leave that, but we're going to cut this off right here. The axle tube off. So I'll show you a few different angles so you know what I'm talking about. But before you cut that out, you got to get this bearing out. All right, now we can cut that axle tube off. A lot of fucking sparks up by the gas tank. We're gonna switch it up a little bit. And don't you say a word about my Sawzall. This thing is my lucky Sawzall, and I'll keep it till the day I die. So that's basically what it's gonna look like. Now I'm just gonna take the angle grinder and shave that down a little bit and make sure it's smooth. Should look a little something like that when you're done. Before pressing the bearing on, you need to put the lug nut studs on. Beefy this thing is. These 35 spline axles are absolute monsters in comparison to the stock 28 spline axles that come in the factory 95 Mustangs. I wish I put this kit on my Mustang sooner. Just installing it, I'm looking at the parts going, man, this looks so much safer and so much cleaner than what I had before. Now it's time to press the bearing onto the full spool. So it should look exactly like this. Make sure that this is positioned as straight as possible. And then we're going to find a little piece that will fit onto this little groove right here and push the bearing uh, flush all the way down because you do not want this thing to get off track. And obviously, once it gets to the bottom there, you should be good to go. Initial so my buddy Ethan let me borrow his press, but he couldn't find the bottom piece. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go buy some metal. That metal isn't strong enough for whatever reason. So I took the old axle and we just stuck it down there and we're going to press this thing in real quick. We want this bearing to go down evenly and as smooth as possible. I've wanted to make this upgrade for a while now, and not just because of the safety components of it with the C-clip eliminators and the longer studs, but I wanted this for the 35 spline axle and more importantly, the full spool. The full spool completely locks out the rear wheels and it's best for straight line racing, AKA drag racing. However, it's not recommended for street use, but there's a lot of things not recommended for street use. Who gives a shit? I more care about the fact that these axles are now locked together with this full spool, which increases traction and is most beneficial for launching off the line when you're drag racing. Bearings pressed on, now we gotta press the bearings onto the axles. Before we press the bearing on, I wanna talk about this little black piece right here. You see that little groove right there? That's gonna go down here, and this will actually go inside like so, and then you push it down. This is where you would wanna put your reluctor wheel if you are keeping it, I'm not, so uh, we're good to press this on. Upgrading the stock 28 spline axles to 35 spline axles is something you're going to want to do if you're throwing some serious power to the road. But if you're like me and you're throwing moderate power to the road and eventually you're going to be throwing some serious power to the road, you still want to do this for the pure fact that you get C-clip eliminators with this kit. The factory C-clips that hold the axles in are incredibly dangerous, especially the more power you throw to the road. And as far as my research goes, this is the most bang for your buck kit I could find. All right, now it's time for the wedding ring. Got to press that on now. We got the wheel bearing pressed on. We got the wedding ring pressed on. And take your last piece of the axle right here. All right, cool. And then this pushes together like so. Yep. And that's how you do it. All right, we need to get the ring on the spool now. We gotta make sure these bolt holes line up. Because for some reason, there's a lot of these bolt holes. I think I'm actually supposed to press this on. I am not going to show an in-depth video of installing the ring and pinion. I did not have time to record it correctly, and I need to get this car back on the ground. So. Tough shit. I'm sorry if that's what you were here for. Guarantee there's an old man explaining it way better than I ever could somewhere right. on YouTube. Tear it up too bad just a little bit, but all right, we're good to go. We can install the full spool. 
The wheel well to the spare tire is so in the way. I cannot wait to cut it out this winter when we put the Team Z roll cage in. But I busted my knuckles on this thing about eight times while installing the spool. So we put some grease on here and now we're going to stick the axle in and we're going to make sure that the axle has good depth inside of the differential or the full spool. The full spool. <laughs> what are you checking? The depth. How do you check the depth? Okay, so you see all that? That's how far in the axle it went. So, we're good. Good on that side. And get this install on the road. Okay, so far so good. My hand's steady. It's like icing a cake, which I don't know how to do. Stay steady, stay steady, stay steady. Stay steady! Oh. Ah, okay. First layer's on. Now we're gonna put it on the axle flange. Oh wait, there's a gasket. Shit. So we got the Mustang back on the ground. It's running and driving. It drives excellent. And I'd show you how fast it is, but we're not finished yet. We need to break the gears in, change the fluid, go back over everything. So come back for part two.